Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about one of my most played planes and probably one of my favorite planes in War Thunder overall. And that would be the A-26 Invader. Now, what I'm going to focus on today is basically it's not exclusive to PS4 players but it's certainly heavily directed towards them. Uh, and mainly that is because you can still buy the A26 on the PlayStation Store if you're a PlayStation player. Uh, if you're a PC player, then this will simply just be a informational video, and next time it's available, you may have a better idea on whether it's worth grabbing or not. Um, <clears throat> there's not really any differences between the two planes other than the PS4 one gets rockets and the PC one doesn't, and the PS4 one's also a premium versus the normal A26 uh, is just a collectible and not a premium but that's a whole nother discussion for an entirely different video so let's get into it so today like I said A26 I believe if you actually looked at my stack card it's probably the top three planes played and is most likely responsible for like half the US tree being researched for me it's a pretty good plane overall, I would say. It's 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 sort of perfect in some aspects. Um, it's got the payload of a B-17, but the speed and agility of a heavy fighter, maybe even attacker aircraft, depending on what you're looking at, which one you're looking at. It. Alright, so, and the reason it's so useful is because it opens up this opportunity to do certain things. Like, you've got frontal weapons on this, so you can strafe ground targets as well as even engage aircraft, or you could probably use it as a, a bomber hunter. I personally haven't tried that, um, mainly because you're better off using it as an actual ground striker than actual fighter, but I know some people like to use it as a fighter which makes sense I mean it does get an air spawn so you could make use out of it but again it's not I mean <clears throat> still a bomber after all so there's only so much maneuverability behind it um, but it, it you know it's not super maneuverable but you might be able to out I don't know if it can out turn like a fuck roll for something I'd have to check that out but if it's a D series it wouldn't shock me if it could out turn that because that thing's just a flying brick but back on topic. Uh, another advantage that this thing has is its dive speed. It can dive, it can go around, I think it'll rip around 416, 417, and it'll start redlining around like 407 um, miles per hour, but uh, that was IAS, so I don't know what it would be without, like I use um, IAS speed, so I'm not exactly sure what it translates to outside that but and miles per hour so eh, do conversion <laughs> um but anyways yes that's useful for temporarily out diving people who might be trying to get on you especially spitfires because we all know spitfires aren't great at diving nor with the diving speed their strength is in turning so you could probably outrun spitfires you can probably temporarily outrun certain aircraft like Fokker Wolves and 109s but they probably will eventually catch you depends how far you have to fly if you're like way out in the middle of nowhere like at their air at their airfield like you might only make it halfway back to the map before they finally catch you um, but typically you can run away and by the time they start to catch you you'll be within AAA range of your airfield or a friendly fighter will be in range to help you something like that so it has that going for it. Uh, besides that, it also has decent defensive uh, armament. It does have two uh, two twin 50 caliber turrets. One on the top of the airplane, one on the bottom. And they're both located like center back of the plane. And they're not bad. They're, they're all right. They, they get the job done. The, I guess um, one of the advantages they you could argue that they have is that they can rotate 360 degrees. So 
they can both essentially cover your tail or any angle you're getting attacked at so it's useful and if they're coming from your front you've got the front arm in. though I don't know if I'd recommend going head on with the plane simply because you've got a glass cockpit so and and I mean there's nothing there stopping them from pilot sniping you essentially I mean yeah it's bulletproof glass but uh cannons and whatnot not that um <laughs> It's funny I'm saying this. You'll you'll know why it's kind of ironic that I'm saying don't go, uh, don't do that later on in the video. But anyways, uh, speaking of the video, this was a very unique match, uh, essentially because I don't know why the Germans didn't climb. The German team didn't climb. I mean, I was I I felt they didn't climb. Either that or I for some reason for once beat them climbing. I I don't know. I was only at like five thousand meters. Which is pretty decent, but typically fighters will beat me to that altitude already. So I thought it was very strange that I was able to beat them climbing. I know I get an air spawn, but I still, usually they outclimb me, and for some reason they didn't this time. Uh, so I took full advantage of that in this case, as you can see. And um, I ended up getting, you know two crits on two of the fighters and they eventually died and I got those kills I could have maybe gotten a little greedy and tr like tried to get more I could have maybe tried dogfighting but you know I was in the swarm of them I thought this was just a bad idea trying to dogfight with this plane in the midst of this swarm because the minute I lose some of my speed that was a big advantage I had going in I was just going to pop shots at whoever was right in front of me and I wasn't going to lose all my speed in a turn I wasn't willing to do that because I'm like nope let's just take the shots we can and get back to base rearm and you know keep going and that's basically what I did in this I took some shots at them I didn't really take any f uh, I think I took some fire anyways I got back to base Rearmed, took back off. Things seemed to be going all right. By the time I was actually about halfway through the battlefield, like where I could drop bombs or do anything, we'd taken out all their bases. There was like one P-51 left trying to engage fighters. I think he shot one of them down, and then I think he also crashed. I'm like, oh no, come on. Well, I check, and there's still two people left. So I'm like, let me get rid of my bombs. And by the way, just as a I had the altitude advantage, so I wanted a, you know, I want some agility. Like, the reason I held on to my bomb for so long is I wanted to make sure they weren't on the airfield, that they weren't sitting on there. Because if they were, you know, I was highly considering climbing up to like 3,000 meters at least, because I think that's like the minimum level for you not to get wrecked by the AA completely. Like, you will get hit, you will turn yellow, you will be messed up. But you should survive. Anything below 3,000 meters above an enemy airfield, you probably are going to die. But the point was, I'd, I was leaving the opportunity to bomb them on the airfield open to me. And, But once I realized they had both taken off from the airfield and were decent ways... Of, I mean, they, were, they were far enough away that I, that wasn't going to be an issue. So I dropped my bombs, got rid of those... You could argue that I could have tried to go for the um, the bait, you know, do the bomb drop and essentially bomb them while chasing me, but I just, it's not the tactic I chose to go with. You could, you could have gone with that, but I'm like, well, I've got an altitude advantage on them. I'll have a temporary speed bonus, speed, speed bonus. No, I, I temporarily have a speed advantage over them, which would probably be gone within the first turn, but still I'd have that. And they are both at low altitude. And I do have defensive turrets and whatnot, so I have some ability to fight back. Well, I don't know why, but they just decided to go straight head on with me. And I just was able to wipe them both out. <laughs> I don't know why they decided to do this, but they did. And they lost. Now, one of them actually did try and do the pilot snipe thing, but it just it didn't work out. He killed the front, the gunner who's sitting in the front of the nose, and that was 
it. He didn't get the pilot. So that was a GG. I ended up bombing one base, two ground targets, and downing four aircraft. Now, if you're thinking about getting this plane, I think it's worth it. It's but it's 19.99 on the uh, PlayStation Store. I think it comes with some golden eagles. It definitely comes with some premium time. I think 15 days. I think, and you can do a lot with it. Now, granted, you know it's all about place out too. If you can't stand bombers, find them boring, like much of the work in the community who bashes bombers. Um, then obviously it's not for you. There's better planes. There's different premiums you can get. You can get, you know, the P-47. You can get the P-51. Whatever. But if you don't mind it, or you don't mind playing it on occasion, the premium bonus, well, premium time plus, like, premium status of the plane, you can really do some major grinding and even Silver Lion gains with this plane. Especially on a, a map like Norway, if you can beat everyone else like tip all right the way i normally play norway is i'll dive i will go into a uh, a shallow dive and get as fast as i can to the right base now if you're not sure what i'm talking about i'm talking about the right base on normandy from the allied side because there's for some reason like 15 aas or triple a's on the right base. I don't know why, but if you bomb that, you don't just kill the base. You kill, like, a, at least a dozen other ground targets in the process. So you rack up a ton of points, ton of silver lines. Like, it's just great. That's why, <laughs> on occasion, you'll have people fighting over the right base because there's just so many ground targets on there for some reason. Now, granted, you're the invader. You don't have to do that. You'll probably be people there, but maybe there's an RA-26 who got there before you. Maybe you spawn late. I don't, I don't know. You got, you know, joint in progress. Whatever. There's other AA vehicles around there that you can strafe. That's the our advantage, the beautiful thing about this. You can go ground striking, dive, or, or bombing, whatever. Dive, strafe ground targets, and wet back the base. Remember, you're probably the fastest bomber in the match. Because, again, you got the payload of a B-17 with the speed of, like, a heavy fighter. So, you're good. You can actually, I mean, hell, you, you'll you have landed and taken off in the time that it would take for a B-17 to set up and land. Maybe even longer, because, you know, those things are giant at high altitude. They can't, you know, you could only decrease in altitude and speed so quickly without ripping your wings off. Versus the A26, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You might have to do, you know, two or three circles by the airfield and then land or some funky S turns, but you've got that speed advantage. That's the other thing, is that you can use it as a bomber purely, and it'll still be a better bomber than the other ones because just because you match their payload and can land and rearm faster than anyone else there can. So overall, yes, I think it's worth getting this plane. I think it's a very unique plane as well. Uh, I guess it's not quite as unique as it used to be because they did add three other variants of the A26, and they didn't used to be class. They used to the, they when they added like the first one or I think the second one, like one of those. It used to have the same bomber classification as the A-26, and they even got used to have uh, bomb sites. But at some point, they decided to change that for some reason. They kept the Invader separate with its bomber class, and the other A-26s got solely the assaulter attacker role and lost their bomb sites and whatnot. So, yes, overall, I do recommend it, and it is a bit different from those RA-26s just because of its classification and premium bonuses. So, there are some pros to buying it versus just using the tree ones and maybe putting a talisman on it. Because this one, the A-26, it gets a bomber spawn. The assault, the attacker runs, I don't believe they do. I don't think they do. Do they? 
They might get a lower altitude spawn. And you lose your bomber reticle. So I don't think it's worth the trade off. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am so sorry for the... if <laughs> I, I'm, I recorded in a... Um, the, the recording was messed up and I recorded in a lower quality than I would have liked to have. But... I felt that it was such a good game and such a great demonstration of the versatility of the A26 going from bombing bases to bombing ground targets to then attacking fighters. I, I thought it fulfilled the demonstration of the diversity is playing so well, or the versatility is playing so well that even though the f quality of the footage wasn't that great, it was just something I had to um, to use. So hopefully you can for forgive me for that. It's not horrible quality, but it's certainly way below what I was trying to get it to record as. But that's fixed. From, that's fixed. So from now on, the video should be full 1080p HD, whatever. Um, but anyways, I hope you found this helpful, useful, and enjoyed the video clip. I'll see you guys in the next video.